Each of these pieces was printed at a different layer height. One low quality, one medium quality, and one high quality. Can you tell which is which? Hey, I am Danny, the 3D DM, and welcome back to the DM Dojo. Today we are going to be doing a layer height test to figure out what is the lowest we can go for an acceptable level of detail for our 3D printed tabletop terrain. The last few episodes have focused on minis, and uh, this channel covers terrain as well, so I wanted to be sure to get there sooner rather than later. <laughs> Question of what layer height to print at is something I struggled to answer when I was new to 3D printing, especially tabletop miniatures and terrain. And I hope today's video can help you nail down that optimal layer height for, for your terrain in order to be at a level that's acceptable for you. This video is a direct response to people online. I, I read it all the time that ah, I can't stand those layer lines. For the most part, I agree. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a limitation of FDM printers but it is just so much cheaper. And when printing terrain, there's there's no question that FDM printers are the better choice, especially right now. So it's easier to work with that limitation than ignore it. On top of that, there's just so many more people that have FDM printers. I am testing layer line visibility, both before primer, uh, primed, as well as painted. I'm testing detail, things like wood grain, metal bits. Also did a minor uh, primer test, flat black versus filler primer. I chose these models because one, I really like them. Two, no supports required. So they're really beginner friendly models. Three, they're an appropriate level of detail for this kind of test. They have little gates. They have this little details like the rivets. There's wood grain. Then there's also this metal portion here, the top tubing. And whatever I tested had to have wood grain because it's just so popular on tabletop, even in future things like 40K. I also used layer heights that match my stepper motor intervals. So this meant motor intervals of 0.04 millimeters. Uh, for some, it might be better to try 0.2 or 0.15 or 0.1 millimeters, depending on your printer. Um, but I chose I chose uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.12, and 0 0.08 because they were far enough apart to make a difference, and the general quality tolerance for terrain starts around 0.2 millimeters, in my opinion. So that's what I went by. I used Cure to slice all of these, and I scaled one of the mortars to be exactly one inch, about 120%, and I left the others at about three quarters of an inch, or about 19 millimeters. I then printed them all in the same filament. I used Tian's Black PLA, 1.75 millimeters, because it's a nice mix of affordability and quality, in my opinion. And then I primed and painted them. I'm gonna walk you through the different phases of this test. So you can see there's there's no magic. And I do that because you're gonna get very different conclusions um, depending on what part of the test you stop at based on your printing needs. Some people will put their unprimed 3D prints on the table and that's totally okay. But you know, layer lines, if layer lines bother you, then the results of this are gonna make a difference when you're looking at layer lines, <laughs> when you're looking at unprimed versus primed versus painted. And I put primed because some people will choose to skip the prime phase and just go straight to paint. Also, one of my pet peeves is seeing STLs for sale and not seeing rendered or printed close-ups of that model. I get why some people do it. You want to put your best product forward, but it kind of makes me skeptical of the fully painted results because you can do a lot of magic with post-processing. Anybody who's been in the crafting world can attest to that. That's magic that some 3D printing DMs might not be able to do. And maybe that's why they get a 3D printer in the first place. And so I want to speak to those people too and show you all aspects, all parts of the process. I'm showing every step in the video to, to really be transparent and to address all of our testing findings throughout the various stages. So without further ado, uh, here are the results. This is the post print uh, naked PLA phase. These are the total print times for each of the printed pieces. I think this is a very important thing to consider. As you can tell there are definitely certain pros and cons from an efficiency point of view for these prints. Uh, the 0.2 millimeter test took three hours and 22 minutes for the boiler and one hour, 38 minutes for the two mortars. On the other hand, the 0.08 millimeter test took seven hours and 37 minutes for the boiler and four hours, 
31 minutes for the two mortars, nearly double the time. So that 0.12 millimeters was just right in between. Again, no post-processing. These prints were made to be printed uh, without supports. Like this, uh, from afar, not much noticeable difference in quality, honestly. Up close and on certain areas like the big curves, the piping and the metal tubing, you can really see the layer lines when you compare it to the others though. I couldn't tell a significant difference between the 0.12 millimeters and the 0.08 millimeters at this point. So if you stop at this phase, the difference between 0.12 and 0.08 might be negligible for you. It was for me. Some people don't like priming their paint, their, their prints before painting because when you prime it, it can make some of the layer lines more obvious. It definitely did in this case. Uh, here you can start to see some of the subtle differences between that 0.12 millimeter prints and the 0.08 millimeter prints. I took this opportunity to use filler primer, which is automotive primer on the 0.2 millimeter pieces. The idea behind me doing this was that this primer is gonna fill in some gaps. It's gonna make the layer lines less visible. And the only catch is that you're supposed to sand it down afterwards, which works great if you're printing out that Iron Man helmet. But with these small miniature pieces, it would have been way too time consuming for me to sand it down in every area, especially in those gaps, like in the wood grains. So I didn't sand it down. I just tried it with the filler primer to just see what type of results I got. You can probably imagine how this would have affected the details and it did drown out some of the details, but it also did make the layer lines less pronounced. This is definitely a viable method to help reduce layer lines. Uh, for smaller pieces like this, even without sanding in my opinion, it's, it is still viable to reduce layer lines if you're okay losing some of the details. Uh, the other two were primed with a thin coat of $1 flat matte black primer from Walmart to take away some of that shine and to give it this coat that acrylic paint would just take a little bit better. Even though PLA does take print, take paint pretty well. I was <laughs> really surprised by the results here. The only place I can really see the difference in layer heights is in the tops of the cannons and in the big curves of the boilers. You know, I used several washes on these. I used a very liberal Citadel known oil for the metal to give it a dirty look. And I also used no oil and Agrax earth shade all over the stones before adding a few more shades dry brushed in there. A lot of folks don't like washing their 3D printed pieces because it can highlight the layer lines. I did it anyways as part of this test to really push these models to the limit. While there's no question there's crisper detail on the 0.08 millimeter terrain pieces, you really have to look for it in my opinion. If I put the three of these down on the table, I don't think anyone in my group would ever question that one of them took three hours to print and the other took seven hours to print. A lot of that is a combination, in my opinion, of the post-processing, the primer, the paint job, as well as the layer line and the settings on my printer that are pretty well-tuned. In conclusion, I think all of these layer heights are acceptable to, desk, to tabletop standards, not to microscopic standards. It really just depends on your personal desire to either maximize quality as much as possible, no matter how long it's gonna to take to print, no matter how long it's gonna to take to post-process with sanding and things like that, or you, if you just wanna get on the table as fast as possible, then it might be better to go with the bigger layer height. Primer and paint really does go a long way to hide some of those layer lines in my opinion. And I am by no means the best painter. You can look at my Final Fantasy VII miniature video if you wanna see that. You know, I still have a very long ways to go, but even thick, simple coats, can do so much to get a 3D printed piece to release it very well on the table. Results will also vary uh, depending on the model as well. These models were made with FDM printing in mind in a way to reduce the layer visibility when possible. Things like grain and stone positioning all go into making a model like this hide its layer lines well. So kudos to Evan from EC3D who designed these. Great job, <laughs> really great job. If you're wondering what my personal preference is, I tend to prefer lower layer heights. I don't mind a print taking longer. Layers are smaller, obviously. They're, ne they're They are naturally less visible. And I'm okay with that because I usually leave prints going while I'm at work. So I come back and something like this, I leave it in the morning, I might wake up and it's there. Or I might go to work, come back and it's there. I don't really have time. I'm working on getting Octoprint set up, something like that so I can, I can do something in between. But for the time being, uh, this works really well for me. And I get the detail that I like, that I, I kind of have come to expect from my prints. But there are definitely benefits to printing at, high, at higher layer heights. I gave you the time so you could see specifics of 
why you might want to because it is a notable difference. You can cut your time in half. And that's that's a real, real sample, right? Some printers have better detail capabilities than others as well. The resolution might be better for others. Uh, Prusa clones generally have that 1.0 layer height max resolution. You can push that a little bit lower in my experience, but you know, the faster print times can be very appealing regardless. So for bigger pieces, you're talking shaving off hours, depending on how big the piece, days. There's, there's, there's merit to that. And uh, as well, I have to say, if you're printing from a printing service, you generally get charged more for quality. So a high resolution, lower layer height. If that's your situation, then that's just one more thing that you want to consider. A final note, I, uh, I've also decided with this channel that I want to support creators in our community who are making printable models that I genuinely like and use, kind of like the Matt Colville style that I don't support a product that I don't believe in and I, I won't use. Uh, one of the ways I hope to do this is to showcase their work in the videos I cover to bring more attention to them so that they can feel motivated and compensated for the work that they do for our community. A lot of times it's been free or it's free. For example, some of the models I use for this layer test are from EC3D's Kickstarter campaign. This Kickstarter is called uh, Forest of Oak Inspire. It has floating airships, including Eberron style flame rings, huge fully decorated trees with, with playable stackable levels. My favorite part is the maps and the other supplemental content that make this the self-contained package, kind of a, uh, here's everything you'll need to print and get a little module going together. Even has little monsters coming up. You know, check this little guy out, right? Little wasp guy. <laughs> Setting, you'll have all this You'll have all these kind of hooks, little monsters, things to, to kind of get together. And I really like that. I like that approach to, to module building. Here's everything you need. And I, I hope that he does more of that in the future. But it's a unique aspect of his Kickstarter in particular when there's like eight going on right now for 3D printable terrain. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. I just, I felt I couldn't move on without thanking Evan from EC3D Designs for sending me these files without me inviting you to check out his Kickstarter if you haven't already done so. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy printing and happy gaming.